They had me the microphone as my shoulders sink under the weight of this dress. The woman says, the one millionth refugee just left South Sudan, can you comment? I feel my feet rock back and forth on the heels my mother bought, begging the question, do we stay or is it safer to choose flight? My mind echoes through the numbers. One million gone, 400,000 dead in Darfur, two million displaced, and this lump takes over my throat as if each of those bodies just found a grave right here in my esophagus. Our once country, all north and south and east and west, so restless, the Nile couldn't hold us together. And you asked me to summarize. They talk about the numbers as if this isn't still happening, as if 500,000 didn't just die in Syria, as if 5,000 are still making their final stand at the bottom of the Mediterranean, as if there aren't entire volumes full of fact sheets about our genocides, and now they want me to write one. Fact. We never talked over breakfast because the war planes would swallow our voices. Fact. My grandfather didn't want to leave home, so he died in a war zone. Fact, a burning bush without God is just a fire. I measure the distance between what I know and what is safe to say on a microphone. Do I talk about the sorrow, displacement? Do I mention the violence, how it's never as simple as what you see on TV, how there are weeks worth of fear before the camera's on? Do I tell her about our bodies, how they are 60% water, but we still burn like driftwood, making fuel of our sacrifice? Do I tell her the men died first, mothers forced to watch the slaughter, as they came for our children, scattering them across the continent until our homes sank, that even castles sink at the bite of the bomb? Do I mention the elderly, our heroes, too weak to run, too expensive to shoot? How they would march them, hands raised, rifles at their backs into the fire. How their walking sticks kept the flames alive. It sounds too harsh for a bundle of wires and an audience to swallow. Too relentless, like the valley that filled with the putrid smoke of our deaths. Is it better in verse? Can a stanza become a burial shroud? Will it sting less if I say it softly? Will the pain leave when the microphone does? If you don't see me cry, will you listen better? Why does every word feel like I'm saying my last? 30 seconds for the sound bite, and now three minutes for the poem. My tongue goes dry the same way we died, becoming ash without ever having been coal. I feel my left leg go numb and realize that I locked my knees, bracing for impact. I never wear shoes. I can't run in.